What's going on guys and welcome back to the best damn YouTube channel in the multiverse, King Lister TV. As you know, all week long we've been having Batman week here on the channel and tonight is the last night of Batman week. I want to thank you guys honestly, truly for tuning in and watching all my Batman related content that we've done this week. I believe that I'm going to make Batman week a yearly thing. You know, you've heard of Shark Week and all these other kind of cool weeks. Well, Batman Week will be a yearly thing here on King Lister TV. This is just the first one, and I'm just really appreciative, appreciative of you guys tuning in and joining me uh, throughout this week, celebrating my favorite character of all time. Uh, Today's the last night. You see, I'm rocking my Dark Knight Returns shirt again. Got my Batman hat on. Got my boy, One-Armed Batman, here with us for this final choice top five of the Batman Week. Tonight's last topic will be top five members of the Bat family. Now, Batman has had many partners, many allies that he's worked with throughout his 80-year history. And not all of them, though, get to be included into that prestigious Batman family of the Robins and Batgirls and the characters they spawn into later on in their, in their careers. So there's been so many, but I've narrowed down a list to the top five, in my opinion, of the uh, members of the Batman family who've worked alongside of uh, the great Bruce Wayne. Okay, let's get right into it. Let's not waste any time. Number five, Damian Wayne, who made his debut in 2006. A fun fact about Damian Wayne, he actually made his uh, original debut in 1987 in a story called Batman, Son of the Demon, but he didn't really have a name. He was officially given the name and reworked into canon history in 2006 as Damian Ween. Damian is the son of Bruce and Talia al Ghul. He is not only the heir to the Batman throne, but also the League of Assassins, being the fact that he is the grandson of uh, Batman's great villain, Ra's al Ghul. He's a skilled martial artist, great in hand-to-hand -hand combat, expert detective, hacker, marksman, swordsman, and obviously tech and gadgets just like his pops. Uh, he grew up in a laboratory. Um, even uh, um, his his origin is still actually not even known to Batman himself. Uh, Talia did something where she got you know Bruce and her DNA and grew him in an artificial womb in a laboratory, and then dropped him off to Bruce as a preteen, basically around the age of twelve. And Bruce has a lot of hard time really. Uh, training Damien because not you know Damien is his son but they don't really know each other that well and he's been trained by the League of Assassins and Raish and Talia so he's much more violent much more darker than any of the problems he had before he likes to kill and it takes a while for him to really get used to his father's style of fighting crime the Batman way um, but eventually he does catch on and he has some great stories, some great ones. He's actually a really, really, really wildly popular character. He's actually one of my favorite Robins. I love the uh, newer animated movies because they have Damon as the uh, as the uh, current Robin with Dick Grayson being Nightwing. It's a it's great stuff. Um, there's actually a great Batman or Robin run in the comics with Damon and and uh, and Dick, which I'll touch on later on down the run. But Damon's a great character, a son of Bruce Wayne. Obviously, he had to make the list. Okay, guys, let's move forward. Number four. This will probably be controversial, but Jason. Jason Todd. He was the second Robin and he eventually became Red Hood. He was a young street orphan who was caught stealing tires with a Batmobile. Uh, his father had disappeared doing a uh, work for Two-Face and his mother overdosed because she was a drug addict. Um, he was a rebellious kid when Bruce found him trying to steal the tires off his Batmobile. So Bruce took him in and made him the second Robin. But he was a much darker Robin. He had... Um, he was much more violent tendencies than a previous Robin who was Dick Grayson had. Uh, but he was a skilled martial artist, obviously in the tech and gadgets, like every Batman ally ever. He was a skilled marksman. And in 1988, there was a major story arc called Death in the Family, which DC Comics allowed the fans to vote on the fate of Jason Todd. See, when Jason first became Robin, he was quite popular. But after being poorly written for, written for a couple of years, fans started to not really care about him as much. And... DC was doing a story arc called Death in the Family, and they gave the fans the option to see if they wanted the Joker to kill Jason Todd or Batman would save his life. They voted by a slim margin to have Jason Todd killed, and in 1988's Death in the Family, Robin, a.k.a. Jason Todd, Jason Todd was officially killed. Now, he would be brought back 16 years later in 2004 uh, under the alias of Red Hood. He would have been, he was uh, brought back to, um, to life by the Lazarus Pit, which is uh, Rachel Ghoul's uh, use that he uses and this gave him enhanced speed strength and durability under the alias red hood he returned as a 
villain for Batman as a while before turning into an anti-hero, but he has much more, you know, uh, lethal ways of fighting crime. He, he, you know, he does believe in killing unlike Bruce, which has made them butt heads plenty of times, but he became a super popular character as Red Hood, and a lot of people probably put him higher in this list, but for me, because of his villainy and his, um, his uh, use of more lethal force, he cannot make my top three. Okay, number three, Tim Drake, who made his debut in 1989. He was the third Robin. He eventually grew up to become the character known as Red Robin. He was high in social class like Bruce Wayne. He was the first Robin to not be an orphan child or from the streets. Um, he actually deduced Bruce's identity. He was there in the circus crowd the night that D uh, Dick Grayson's parents were murdered he witnessed that and then he followed that story of um dick grayson but he saw robin in a news clip do a same acrobatic flip that he saw dick grayson do that night in the circus and he was able to deduce the identities of bruce wayne and Ro or sorry of batman and robin because of that he realized that bruce took him in and then shortly after bruce took in uh dick he realized that batman took on a partner named robin and the fact that uh, Tim is a genius level intellect and detective, he deduced that by himself. He actually trained himself hand-to-hand -hand combat and uh, other forms of martial arts before joining Bruce and getting you know used to techs, tech and gadgets and all the good stuff with that. He is one of the best Robins, um, in my opinion. And honestly, Bruce has been quoted himself as saying that um, that Tim will be the best detective in the world one day, uh, replacing Bruce as the greatest detective in the world. Uh, Tim has a lot of natural abilities and taught abilities that he taught himself and that Bruce taught him. He is a valuable asset to the Batman family. He took under the Red Robin identity once Dick Grayson fired him from Robin and promoted Damian Wayne. Um, basically, Tim believed that Bruce was still alive somewhere and he was going to uh, go out in the world and search for him. He took under the name Red Robin to... Uh, continue his fight on crime. All right, moving right along to number two, Barbara Gordon. That's right, Batgirl. Uh, made her debut in 1967. She is a daughter of Commissioner Gordon. She also has genius level intellect. She is a uh, computer scientist and great hacker. She's highly skilled in hand to hand combat, and she also has um, is an expert with tech and gadgets as well. Um, she was a member of the Batman family. She's been a member of Birds of Prey, Suicide Squad, Justice League, all the major um, teams in DC you could possibly think of. She's pretty much been a member of. She is an iconic character in her own right. She was the first female ally of Batman. She is Batgirl. Um, just for that alone, she's an iconic character. I mean... There's a great story arc called The Killing Joke in the late 80s, which uh, you probably heard of if you're a Batman fan, where the Joker shoots her and paralyzes her, which forces her to end her career as Batgirl, and she ends up taking the mantle of Oracle. Oracle is where she uses her computer uh, tech-savvy skills to basically be in eyes and ears for the team and help them in that way, hack stuff, you know, do all that kind of good stuff um, on the computer. She would eventually become Batgirl again later, years, later, years later down the road, but she has been nonetheless an iconic character and been a supported character for Batman and a lot of other Batman characters for a long time. Actually, in 2011, IGN had their top 100 greatest superheroes, um, and she ranked number 17. That's pretty good for being a member of you know, for being a side character, if you ask me, making a top 20 of all-time heroes. Okay, and number one, should be no surprise, the original, the iconic boy wonder himself, Dick Grayson, who made his debut in 1940. Dick Grayson has not only been Robin, he has most notably been Nightwing, and also had a couple runs as the man himself, Batman. Um, he was a member of a circus, um, a circus group. He was a the youngest member of the family, the Flying Graysons, who were acrobats. And his family was killed in an attack by a monster named Tony Zuko, who was owed money by the head of the circus, who hadn't paid. So he took it out by killing the Graysons. Dick survived, even though he was supposed to die as well. Bruce was there that night, saw that happen to that boy, and took him in as his ward and started raising him as his own. Eventually, Dick obviously became Robin. He is a skilled acrobat and aerialist, skilled hand-to-hand -hand combat, expert detective and tactician, and obviously he has great use for tech and gadgets as well. He is a founding member of the Teen Titans, and most of the time the leader of the Teen Titans, being that he is Robin, and then eventually Nightwing. Um, he also has been a member of the Justice League as well, with uh, the, the Nightwing identity. 
Um, and as I said, he was Batman. Originally, he was uh, his first role as his first run as Batman came in 1994 after the Nightfall series, where Bane broke Batman's back. Dick would take the mantle for a little bit of time. But one of his most recent and memorable runs came in the late 2000s. Um, from like 09 to the 2011, he was Batman. Uh, Bruce dis disappeared in the final crisis, and Dick took over the Batman identity with uh, Bruce's son Damian being Robin. It was like a flip on the original Batman and Robin dynamic. Batman being so dark and broody, and Robin, Dick Grayson being so lighthearted and fun. It was now flipped that where Batman was a much more lighthearted Batman than we ever seen because it was Dick Grayson, and Robin being Damian's son, who was much darker, was a much darker Robin. So it was like a nice flip on the uh, original Batman and Robin uh, dynamic. It was now turned on its head. They had a pretty good run from that time until 2011 when DC Comics relaunched their comics with the New 52 series. But um, he is the most like Bruce's son. In a lot of ways, he's always been kind of the heir to the Batman mantle. Despite all the other Robins, despite Bruce even having his own son, Dick has always been the heir to that Batman th um that Batman throne. He's been a big brother to all the other members of the Batman family who've come after him. He is the most iconic psychic. I think psychic was coined because of him. He is the most famous. You know, there wouldn't be a Kid Flash or uh, a Speedy or a Superboy or, you know, any of those um, characters like that without the original Robin. He's huge. And then that same list that I mentioned about Barbara Gordon with IGN, uh, Dick Grayson ranked number 11 on the top comic book heroes of all time, according to IGN 2011. And that is with him being originally a sidekick to become number 11 hero of all time. That's pretty good. So those are my top five. Damian Wayne, Jason Todd, uh, Tim Drake, Barbara Gordon, and Dick Grayson. Uh, four Robins and a Batgirl, pretty much, as members of the Batman family. So there you guys have it. What do you guys think? Please comment down below. Let me know what you think. Who's your favorite Robin? Who's your favorite character in the Batman comics, in the Batman mythos, in the Batman, in the Bat family? Please let me know. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe. You guys know the deal. Um, Batman week has concluded with this video. We will be moving forward with new topics this week. I have a couple things in mind I want to do definitely this week on Troy's Daily Talks. We will be doing an NBA free agency back, uh, breakdown since free agency is just getting started. And I'm sure there will be plenty of moves being made within the next few days. Other than that, guys, thank you for joining. And as always, too sweet.